Oh, they'll be calling you a radical. So busy day, got a lot going on. Having trouble getting into San Luis Obispo. Flights, all the delays, all the backed up flights. Good Lord. Just see the prices. Anyway. Energy, 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 energy. The footprint, the footprint, the footprint, the footprint. There's a great new article out from the EU, and what they're doing over there is legend. Now, I'm going to talk about the footprint, how we can solve the entire energy crisis in the United States overnight. First, I want to talk about Tucker Carlson. So, as you know, I spent half my life in the slums of La Jolla. I still spend half my life there. I have my whole life. So, Tucker, CIA Carlson, going to go... Interview Tsar Putin in Russia. You don't think he's C not CIA? You're... Tucker Carlson, we all knew when we were kids, you know. He's a little bit younger than me, just a couple years. Lived in La Jolla. So did I. Right there in the slums of La Jolla. Right there. It's not that big of a place. We all knew each other, blah, 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 blah. His mom, his, well, he got adopted later by the mom. The Swansons, yeah, that billionaire fortune, multi-billionaires, everybody, fuck, come on. Anybody's been in La Jolla, anybody that's been in that part of the world, especially when we were young, blah, blah, we all knew. Fuck, everybody fucking knew, because I was over in the slums of La Jolla, PB. Everybody always fucking knew. Everybody in fucking La Jolla is fucking CIA. They're all connected. They're all oligarch fucking nuclear freaks. So his mom, mama was a hippie, daddy was a fucking yippie. His dad was the news anchor on San Diego, remember? That, that's his dad. Remember that guy on, what was it, Channel 8, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Tucker Carlson's dad. The mom was a hippie from San Francisco who was like they all were there, you know, the art scene, you know, they were inherited wealth, gazillionaires, never worked a day in their fucking life. That was the whole scene, right? That's her. She was a multi billionaires. Inherited wealth from fucking so giant, which that's where Tucker's money is. Her mama was a hippie. She bolded. She was in L.A. You know, the inherited wealth fake fucked up art scene, which wasn't really a fucking art scene. So daddy, CIA daddy fucking married the Swanson billionaires. She adopted the Carlson boys. Tucker. You don't think he's not CIA? You're fucking, he's a fucking lunatic, by the way. Yeah, we all know it down there. Everybody fucking knew that whole fucking crowd. Anybody that's from down there spent any fucking time down there. Like, you know, in the day, it wasn't like it is now. Ten million gazillion fucking <laughs> Mickey Rat. You know, I knew Robin. So, I want to talk about the energy crisis. The whole Tsar Putin thing. War. What is it good for? So, everybody's all over me. All over me, of course. You know, I've been the peace activist for all those years. On the nightmare, which I call the Middle East Divide. But I want to start. How did this imperialist, racist, psycho freak show start that's really going on a quarter century now? 2000, Florida. And then... 9-11, to get the, you create a situation, everybody knew it was happening, the NSA, CIA, they'll tell you we knew. You know, I was talking to a professor today, I'm working on a piece on 9-11 at Weber State. Anyway, blah, 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 blah. I taught the derivative arbitrage class there. So many of the Saturday kids were in my class, there was five kids arrested there that day, I could write a whole book just on that day. I taught that class. They bought puts on the air runs. Kyle Matson for years. <laughs> What's everybody, you think, kill him lunch, taught him how? Very possible. That's when this madness started. So, they were Saudis, right? Saudis are imperialists. Pretty well to do Saudis that did 9 11. You know about the Sovereign Wealth Act, Mary Antoinette Obama vetoed. So, this madness started when the United States populace got bloodlust, thirsty, psycho. 
which they've been since Pop Popple, Oppie Dropped. Oppie, what a sick motherfucker in a true man. Everybody backed out. Baby never born, mother never pregnant. You know where Leo was living when he died. You know where Leo lived. What? La Jolla? Oh, yeah. He wrote the letter. So as much as I love Einstein, and I'm a giant, giant fan. That's why I'm growing the hair out. A woman's asked me if I'll be in her play, and I'm going to play Einstein. I haven't grown the mustache yet. You see what she says? Well, we can, we'll do it. We'll get it done. So I'm a giant fan of Einstein's. Giant fan of Einstein. He's one of my favorite in the world. His philosophies. He called war a disease. And he said anybody that participated in it was sick and ravaged. Remember, he called himself a Quaker. So he was asked to be the first new president of the new colonial state in the Middle East. He said no. No, absolutely not. So when did this quarter century bloodbath begin? You know, we need to come up with a name for this first quarter century of this century. You know, it's imperialism, the rebirth of colonialism, the, I mean, 2.0, whatever. I mean, it blows my fucking mind. It was the United States when no Iraqi ever laid a hair on anybody. And how did it happen? The church leaders, the church leaders in this country, which are of all better faults with us all going to hell. You know, the evangelicals, the predominant measure, everybody went all in on going after Iraqis. Saddam Hussein had weapons. Colin Powell told that incredible when he knew full well. They didn't. Nobody from Iraq laid a finger on anybody in the U.S. We slaughtered two million. That's what the whole world was like. Well, Tsar Putin says it all the fucking time. Being Maybe Tucker Carlson get him to talk about it. What are you talking about? You invaded my neighbor. You went halfway across the world and slaughtered two million innocent fucking people. What we did in Iraq? So vile. I fought it. I fought it every fucking day. I fought it every fucking day. From day one, I knew it was a fucking lie. You know, I'd spent so much time right there in Lower Manhattan. At the peace vigil in D.C. So much work for so many years, long before I had a YouTube camera. Afghanistan, Pop Popo Oppie dropped the same freaks that dropped the bomb. Military industrial is complex, beware. Now you got a generation, that's all they know. The United States war pigs, and that's all we are. So, 2000, Iraq, Afghanistan went on and on. Barry Antoinette, who calmed the shit out of us. Remember? The American populace knew they'd been had. Obama ran on the peace platform. Voted against both low junior senator. Went 100% on the anti-war, anti-Bush Cheney. No more war, peace. Of the, it was a referendum, one of the greatest landslide fucking votes. The Democrats had 60 to 40. You heard that right, you young people. 2008, 60 to 40 in the United States Senate landslide, super massive majorities in the House. And buried the Peace Act. What did he do with it? He doubled down on the wars. We're talking one of the greatest liars who ever, I think he's probably the greatest con man who ever lived. Even more than Trump. I mean, Trump's a con man from hell, but most people are on to him. They weren't on to Obama Dummer. He tricked everybody. You know, he was a warmongering freak who did nothing. He destroyed the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party was ripped to shreds by one guy. Barack Obama just destroyed it, turned it into this radical imperialist, corporatist stand. No more environment, no more labor, anything that they stood for for years, over gone. So, we fast forward. Tsar Putin invades Ukraine. I don't think people have a clue. And you know, I got all my books right here. You know, I got hundreds of them. You know.
Try me. Try me on the subject. Hundreds of them gave up on the environment. I don't think people have a fucking clue how bloody that fucking war is in Ukraine. I was trying, you try to get numbers, you're trying to find numbers, and everything that I can find, you know, I have lots of connections in Vienna. You talk to the real activists there, and you see them. Well, most people think it's half a million. The war's going to be two years old. Half a fucking million. Do you know how giant that fucking number is? Oh my God. Pop, pop, a loppy drop. Make sure you stop at the parallel. Don't you go any further, MacArthur. Fucking my dad, the MacArthur Marine, nuked to death in the Vatican site. Don't you cross that parallel. Oh, he crossed it. He turned Korea into hell. Hell's Kitchen would have fucking loved that. Went out to Vietnam to kill the Viet Cong. Kissinger, Cambodian. Kissinger is dead. Kissinger is dead. Cambodia. Oh, my God. Got to talk to Henry before I go to Fukushima. We've had it with wars. We're done. 80s, 90s, peace. Downsizing the military. Closing military bases all over. We're done with it. Can't have that. The gift that keeps on giving the war fucking imperialist creeps the greatest fucking thing ever. It wasn't the action, it was the reaction. And we all, and they knew they were coming. I mean, that's been proven and well documented. All the documentaries, CIA, NSA weren't speaking yet. They knew. Create the vacuum, then fill the vacuum. 9 11. Sound familiar over there? 10 7. Then the. Reaction, this plan is ready to go. Everything they ever dreamed of, now they have an excuse. Not one of them was an Iraqi. The 20th bombers, home in Saudi Arabia. Isn't Blinken in Saudi Arabia today, right now? Remember Trump used to be so outspoken about it, say they were Saudis, they were Saudis, and then as soon as he becomes president, he gets in bed with the Saudis. Just like he's going to release the Kennedy Warren Commission. Talk about a patsy protecting high-profile prisoners since 1963. Oswald to Jeffrey Epstein. It's a bunch of imperialist freaks. So, this bloodbath that's going on, which I call Middle East of Eden. Fuck, what a fucking nightmare. One-sided wars. Who created the one-sided war dynamic? Where they do not even have the capability to fight. Yet, you act like there's a war going on. Who invented that? The United States. I will quote Hoover. Like, I always quote Hoover. I mean, I should quote Dorothy Day, the great actress. She went psycho. True man, true man, true man, true man. Hoover. Never in the history of mankind has any nation, any war machine, any people indiscretionally mass murdered women and children till now it revolts my soul august 7 1945 same clan doing it all over same people leo from la jolla said don't do it unique came back from germany baby never born mother never pregnant they knew that the germans didn't have it they knew they weren't interested did it anyway Leo, the Tsar, La Jolla died there. How about for me? Everybody backed out. Everybody. So Einstein, as much as I love Einstein, and I love Einstein, he's my favorite. He's the greatest as he got older. Remember, I was being touted as a young because I had these high scores, blah, blah, blah. Theoretical physics, I knew that was a sham. I, just, I remember telling a thing, what are you even going down that road for? That's been all debunked. Even Einstein, give it up. Go be a plumber. Go be a plaster. Go be a car. Because what? Remember what he used to call it? Spooky science at a distance. Entanglement. They've proven it over and over and over that you can't make heads or tails of any of this reality that we live in. Because the light. I mean, they beam lights from 8 billion light years away. And when you shoot the... 
It should be there. It happens there. Einstein called it spooky science at a distance. But remember one thing about Albert, and I've talked to this woman that's doing this play, wants me to play Albert, and she picks my brain constantly. I told her today this. Remember one thing. Einstein signed the letter. Teller drove in his car, Teller's car, to Long Island, to Einstein's place, and they worked on him. Leo worked on him and worked on him and worked on him. He didn't want to sign it, but he said at the end of the live multiple times, his biggest mistake ever was signing that. Opened up the spigot on the Manhattan Project and just fed him all the power. Never shut it off. This ties into the energy complex. It's all one and the same. This is the same group of freaks. So in Europe, every time I'm in Europe, it blows my mind. Because the thing that you cannot wrap your mind around in the United States, no one can. They, I mean, consumption junkies, the fact that we consume over 50% of the world's product, we make up less than 4%. That became a problem in 1980. Reagan! Oh, God. All right, Contra! I mean, God. Country didn't have any debt. I mean, country was happy. Until Reagan. 6% we're consuming. We make up less than 4%. So it would be a problem. Then it was 12. Then it was 30. Then it was, it's 54%. So nobody can wrap their mind around it at lower consumption. So in Europe, how did they do this? On How do you, the energy complex? Well, number one, they lower consumption. When I'm over there, they have major campaigns going on. on how, And they mock the shit out of Americans. You want to be like them? You've been over there? You see them? Yeah. They mock the shit out of us. Rightfully so. You know? So, they're racing forward so fast with clean energy. Now, the Biden administration... Puts the moratorium on liquid natural gas, which I think is totally asinine. I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> what, what are they trying to press forward? Well, you know what they're trying to press forward. Nuclear. Nuclear energy, which is the dirtiest, filthiest, nastiest, shittiest in the world. I mean, so when you're in Europe, they'll just say, you know, they don't have a desert over there. The sun doesn't shine over there. I mean, very little. It had to do with wind, geothermal. They've gotten creative stuff, but they've lowered consumption. I mean, solar and wind's going to create wind. And then you hear these people, oh, wind takes out too much. You're full of shit. These lies they put out by the lobbyist. You could cure. We don't have to be what you're. You could fix the entire energy complex like that overnight. I mean, overnight. You could do away with all fossil fuels. You could do away with all nuclear. That's why they should be putting the fucking moratorium is on filthy, dirty, filthy nuclear energy. You know about the centrifuges? You know this new immigration bill, which is all bullshit. It's all political theater to get you to vote one way or the other to keep you separated. Neither fucking party wants to fix that situation because this is all about cheap labor. You know, they could fix the immigration. You could fix the immigration like this in one second and force labor laws that exist. That's it. It's that simple. The laws are out there. They don't exist. Fucking go after these people that fucking human traffic. They fucking use these people that are working because they know they're in the country illegal. They fucking cheat them. They steal them. They're, it's pure slavery. Who are they going to go tell? It's like this mega welfare there next to me. I've been doing it to hundreds of fucking workers for fucking decades. Backhands one in the face for asking for his fucking check. I haven't seen any charges. Houses all over. All my neighborhood houses full of you know, exploited labor. Enforce the fucking laws that exist. How are you going to fix the energy complex? Real easy. Real simple. We have a giant desert in this country. I live in the fucking desert. I mean, the sun shines in Utah over 300 days a year. They look at the map in Europe and they're like, fuck you, this giant desert. It's a no-brainer. Yeah, solar, rooftop solar. Rooftop solar on your house, rooftop solar on your What's, here it is, it's this simple, kids. Energy crisis over, energy problem over. Cheap, cheap energy, fucking fix the whole fucking planet. Oh yeah, I can do it. 
allow people no fees. You put a solar panel on, no fees like here in Utah. You don't have to pay that giant fee. Allow rooftop solar businesses, free market people to net meter sell back into the grid. It's that fucking simple. They were doing it in Nevada, which sunshine's 330 days a year in Nevada. And then some legislature says, oh, that's not fair to coal and nuclear. So to, here, it's not fair to call. Gavin, in California, people were, I mean, they had it going on. I mean, you so were just killing it in California. No, we, we're going to stop. No more net meter, and we're not going to let you stop. Unlimited, we have a fucking grid. Simple. If you just said this, you, you, Utah did this today. We pass a law, you can sell back into the grid all you want. And these utility scumbags, they've got to accept it. And they got to pay you. Set the rate by the commissions. And I'm telling you, fucking, these Freudian fucking monkeys, dogs, sheep, goats, fucking creatures, fucking whatever you want to call them. That's all they know. They'll do so fast, make you a fucking head spin off. Nevada, Utah, Arizona, much of California. Most of California, New Mexico, the sun shines all day. A lot of Texas just allow people to sell their solar back into the grid. You would cure the entire energy crop over. It's over. I'm telling you, it's done. It's done. Fossil fuels are over. Nuclear industry is over. It's over. What about cars? They would switch to solar cars so fast, make you a fucking head spin off. Fucking not Elon Musk is fucking, let's go dig up some fuck. We found a new fucking batch in uh, the new found in Africa that what they're doing, it's colonialism all over again. You know, there's cars, they have them, the technology's there. People are using them. I got a friend who's got a van. He's built it and he stands up the solar panel in California in La Jolla. Sucks it up, lays down. Works so fucking nice. Me and him was talking last time. I was here last month when I was down there. It's that simple. Europe is, alternative energy is killing it. Killing it. And the sun doesn't shine over there. They don't have a giant fucking desert. Oh, we. It's really that easy. Why don't they? Because the lobbyist, Price Anderson, the nuclear industry, they open the faucet. The pork that flows out, $2 billion, forget centrifuge again. You know about the centrifuge process? I talked to a woman who was arguing with me about nuclear. I'm like, do you even know about the centrifuge process? You have to tune uranium-238 and 238. You know nasty? Well, the, Obama, or the oh, Biden administration just put $2 billion on the border deal because they're centrifuging it in Russia. Remember, we're going after all the oligarchs. We're blocking off everything, including vodka, whatever, the fucking oligarchs. Then it gets fucking just slows. Oh, Russian oligarch on Harvard. Russian oligarch at Harvard. Another Russian. Then it gets disclosed. Harvard's been doing nothing. Yeah, I'm a Harvard. I cheat on my fucking PhD. I cheat on my fucking cancer site. And the bootlicker fucking New York Times report as fudgy. I mean, the whole, these institutions like Harvard, well, all of them. They need to be boarded up. They need to be boarded up and the people need to start being arrested. These are cancer studies. They've been fudging that. Fudging. Fraud. So, there's the answer on the energy. It's that simple. It's that fucking simple. Allow fucking people to sell back into the grid unlimited amounts. You'll see solar going up on every fucking barn, fucking house, fucking business, chicken coop, dog fucking house, fucking, you know, you name it, people are going to have it. The Freudian, I mean, if you haven't learned, people do anything for money in this country. So, They'll produce so much fucking energy, we'll have too much. We don't even know what to fucking do with it. Simply. Arizona, Utah, New Mexico, Nevada, Nevada, Nevada. You know which people would be making? Oh, well. It's, that's, there's your fucking answer. We have a grid. At the speed of light, your electricity off your rooftop here in Utah, in California, in Nevada, can be in Times Square. Back to the wars. 
These two fucking wars, what's going on? They're not wars. I mean, this proxy war that's going on in Ukraine, these, and if you haven't learned that, this is nothing more about, this isn't a war against Tsar Putin. He's not a president. He's a Tsar. They're imperialists. They're back. This is about the military industrial complex having control of politicians. The tail wagging the dog. You don't have any politicians that will stand up to anybody. They bow to any IPAC, Super PAC, fucking, well, whatever PAC they are. You know, these, all of them, that's who's running the show. So none of these politicians will say, hey, wait a minute, I'm not going with whatever their money says or whatever their, you know, I'm already elected, I'm there. If I get beat, I get beat, so what? While I'm here, I'm going to do my work. You know, if I lose, so what? I'm How old I'm president? I'm going to do my thing. You know, if they beat me, put up a bunch of money to defeat me, so what? I did what I did. I think the American populace was the first person that would stand up to the machine in a high-profile position. It's the war machine. It's the military industrialized complex. You know, I mean, fuck these. In this quarter century, this war machine has gone insane with problems. I mean, look at Blackwater. You know, your $2,000 fucking chicken sandwiches. I, Eisenhower was right. I mean, it's not a cliche. Beware of the military industrialized complex. Hello. Look what it is. So these wars, the war in Middle East of Eden, that's not a war. They have no ability to fight back. None. That's not a war. Who's responsible? Look in the fucking mirror. The United States it's taxpayer? Well, it's not even taxpayers' money. I mean, they're really in out of control. And Rand Greenspan, the science fiction economics, they're really in out of control. Keep the interest rate low for fucking 25 years. Fucking make our money worthless. Our money's worthless now. Debtor Trump and debtor O'Biden. Trump ran $8.2 trillion worth of debt in four fucking years. That's more than Barry Antoinette did. You know, in his eight years, he ran what? 12, I mean, it's insane. And then, oh, Biden, they're identical. They're bowing to these military industrialized complex freaks, these racist, psycho, genocidal fucking maniacs. Pop, pop, oh, up, he dropped. They never fucking stopped. They're trying to imperialize the world. They're imperialist. It's not new world, it's old world order, Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson, CIA, is a fucking get everybody fucking down there knows it. Everybody knows it. You know, Swanson, the billionaire, you know, she adopted those boys after Mama left. Mama was a hippie. Daddy, Mama just, fuck it, I'm out. You know, she was in L.A. And she was a mom. So, the two kids had to sue when she died. Guess when she died? I mean, it always comes back to this, doesn't it? She got cancer in 2011 and died. Just, oh, it's all coincidence. Just like when Olivia Newton-John went and in 2017 on May 2nd, did the concert program, she made her cancer come back. It's all coincidence, right? It's all fuck. Just like the owner of the Padres in La Jolla, who I know my age, he's my age. Got cancer the exact same time I did. The exact same cancer. I'm sleeping on the beaches there doing my biology work, fucking my typo. His billions, he died. I mean, it blows my mind. <laughs> we all know anybody that's from down there. We know what La Jolla Carlson is. And if you don't believe the CIA and the KGB and MI6 and the other one, Middle East of Eden, are all in bed together. Edward Snowjob told you straight up to your face. <laughs> he, he was a special forces guy. I'm a rainbow striped freaking. <laughs> my dad, my uncle, they were special forces guys. Oh, beast. Beast. I mean, just physical beast minds like traps. Remember he jumped out of the airplane, broke his legs? His mom and dad were CIA. 
Lindsay Mills having my baby. CIA, CIA, bloodlines of CIA. Now it's become a bloodline. Father was CIA, mother was CIA. Look at me now, I'm CIA fucking. You know, where did Jeff Bezos get all that fucking money? Where did Bill Gates get all that fucking money? Fucking to steal the fucking operation, man. I go on that rant, poetry, but. These propped up inherited wealth, CIA clan, Edward Snow job on 60 minutes. Well, I had the very top surveillance in the entire CIA. I had it all the way. You know, I was the hot guy, self-proclaimed greatest hacker in the world, blah, 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 blah. Right on 60 Minutes, he told you. I got to the top, and I found out there was another top. I got You get into it? Yeah. Well, who was it? Global oligarchs. So he's got the chip. He's in the bunker in Hawaii, which... That's where the orchestrate, they're covering up the cover of Fukushima, classify Kevin Blanche, do the whole fucking thing, blah, blah, blah. He flips behind his back the cube, just like I flip my can, and he's got the chip in there. Now, you tell me, wouldn't he have a backup on that chip, number one? Number two, why the fuck would he hand it to Glenn Greenwald? Now, I asked Glenn Greenwald to his face. You know that. Here, at the university in Utah. And he ran for I asked him, well, can't you? now he's a Fox News contributor. Uh, him and Tucker Carlson. What? And then you know about Laura. He handed her. She won all the awards. She got to stand up on the Oscars. You know whose daughter she is? Do you know who's that? Laura, do you know who she is? What? The MIT endowment billionaire? Oh, that went Looney Tooney. And back to Harvard. Yeah, that's the daughter. Why would he hand it to them? Oh, well, where's the rest of it? He only put out that much. Where's the rest of it? I ain't got it back. It was a setup to kill Anonymous. So he's flying to South America, right? By the way, did you see the Chile president was killed in a helicopter today? The old one? I mean, talk about, whoa, CIA at it again? Whoa. Whoa. Banana Republic, you do know about United Fruit. You do know about Freud's nephew. This is for the big kids. How is he going to South America? How the hell is he sitting next to Tsar Putin? Global oligarchs, he's sitting to the... So if he had top CIA clearance, where do you think Putin's get all his info? You think Putin's just going to let him sit there without interrogating? Say, hey, I need to know this, this. You know that Snow's not feeding him anything he wants. Double agent. What, like Lindsey Mills? I mean, I say Snow Job better have a DNA test on that baby because I think it's probably Putin's kid. Oh, remember she was the pole swinger? Lindsey? <laughs> remember Mikhail Lesson? In DuPont Circle, and remember, remember the 5th of November? Ooh, didn't Kevin Blanche invent that whole thing? Yeah, me and the Fairhurst boys. Oh, we forgot about the Million Man of Smudge. Ah. Hmm. This quarter century will be looked back as the most disgusting, vile, sickening human beings in the history of mankind. United States and our comfortability well I didn't do it our vote doesn't count hmm. Hmm. it's our unborn children's tax dollars that are paying for this it's further in debt billion here, billion there, trillion here trillion there, gazillion, a Google what's going on in the Middle East of Eden. What's going on in Ukraine is the most sickening fucking things I've ever seen in my life. And I lived through Vietnam. It's the most disgusting. And who's doing it? The United States. There's no difference between Trump and oh, Biden. No, oh, Biden's always been a warmonger. Always. Military. I like how he tries to tout the African-American vote, the black vote, when he's the one that created that whole 
human warehousing prison complex. That was him. Trump? Fuck. That's one of the most racist, imperialist fuckers who ever walked con man life. So is a, but so is a Biden. And then Bobby? Yeah, fuck. How can you vote for Bobby? He's the same one. He's in that same fucking clan. You know? Look in the fucking mirror. These two fucking wars are the most vile, sickening things I've ever seen in my fucking life. Well, they're not wars. Half a million fucking people dead in two fucking years. I mean, there'll be no men left in Ukraine soon. Young men in Russia soon. You sound familiar, right? You can blame one nation. One nation under God. And it was on freedom of all. One nation is to blame. And they started this madness in 2000. 2002, 2003. Bush? Oh, fuck. What a fucking criminal creep. So now I'm saying if weapons, when they knew full well, they didn't just a bold faced radical lie. The plume is coming over us now. We'll tell you it's safe when he knew that. The United States of usury, we are to blame. We are to blame. We need to, every one of us, look ourselves square in the fucking mirror. We are to blame what's going on in Gaza, what's going on in Ukraine. We're the ones funding it. We're the military fucking war machine that's fueling it. It's us. So just because you're not pulling the trigger, dropping the fucking bomb... I mean, we have a major military base right here. And it's a lot of the stuff's orchestrated right here in Utah, Hillfield. You work out there? I mean, I wouldn't want those fuckers if they paid me a million dollars a day. I wouldn't accept their fucking blood money, fucking, just like a stimulus check. I told you, but if I get one, I'll burn it online. You know, Fukushima, the greatest event in human history. It's the war lobby machines, these imperialists. It's racism. Oh, fuck yes, it's fucking racist. It's one group of people thinking they're better than other group of people, which it's always been that way, right? I mean, that's how World War I started. World War II started, you know? The whole nightmare in Japan. I mean, this whole imperialism. What are we going to call it? What are we going to name this? I mean, we're going on a quarter century. And you can blame one nation. One people. United States is to blame for all of this. Every fucking bit of it. You know, what happened on 9-11? Sure wasn't Iraq. It wasn't Saddam Hussein. It wasn't even Bin Laden. It wasn't Afghanistan. Pop, pop, I'll be dropped. Don't you dare cross that parallel and turn Korea to hell. Oh, they did. Went after Vietnam to kill the Viet Cong. Went after Afghanistan to kill the Taliban. Went after Iraq to get Dick Cheney and fucking BlackRock. Fucking $2,000 fucking hamburgers. A big old sack. Oligarchs, fucking military industrialized war pigs, military industrialized bombing creep freak show. Make it rain in Ukraine. Middle East of Eden. John Steinbeck. The Grapes of Wrath on Balco. George ain't going to let me tend them rabbits. That's what it is. That's exactly what it is. George ain't going to let me tend them rabbits. I'll say one word about the war in the Middle East, which I've already said this. And the war in Ukraine, for that matter. I don't need your holy war. Feeds the rich while it buries the poor. Human grocery store ain't that pretty. All their blood is on all of our hands. The children, the people, it's hideous. It's beyond, way past disturbing. Tim Shell. Tim Shell. The old timers around here used to always say, I'm an Old Testament kind of guy. It's out of the Old Testament. I used to tell people after, I had a woman call me that I dated and hung around with in high school, really good looking, beautiful, incredible woman. 
But I was so wild, whatever, blah, blah, she married this goody hairspray jujitsu. Her son was one of the first ones killed. She knew I was the peace activist. She called me. I haven't heard from him in decades. I says, I married that dude. I says, did he ever go to war? Did his dad? Tell me, did his dad ever go? No. Did his grandfather? His grandfather dodged the draft in World War II. He took a farm from her. But they were all gung-ho about him going, weren't they? Yeah. Grandpa was, dad was, school leaders, church leaders. So she was blaming herself. So I told her, I got a book for you. I met her. I gave her a copy of East of Eden. I said, even if you don't even read the whole book, just read the last couple pages. Remember at the end? Good son, bad son. Remember Adam was blaming on himself? You know, the ones killed in World War One. One of the twins. Remember what Li, the Chinese philosopher, the house servant, remember what Li said? Tim Shell, thou mayest. What's that mean? Men are responsible for their actions. Now, what did he mean in that? Did he mean literally, literally, that young man made the decision to go to war? No, that's not what he meant. He was throwing it right back on Adam saying, you know, you're probably right. How do you cope and deal with that? We're the ones that embodied it. Just because we're not the one that's marched off. We're not the one in Gaza committing these fucking war crimes. We're not the one in. We're not a Russian soldier. We're not a Ukrainian soldier. Pulling the fire. We're not dropping the fucking bombs. We're not doing the droney. Or are we? Or are we? We're responsible as a people. We're responsible for this quarter century bloodbath from hell that is imperialist and colonialized all over the world. What we did in Iraq is beyond vile and disgusting. It's fucking way. What we did in Afghanistan, what's going on in Gaza, what's going on in Ukraine is pure imperialism. It's reported by politicians in this country that bow to lobbyists and super PACs and money. But we've allowed that to happen. We've allowed for multi-billionaires to pay no taxes, to get richer, to get richer. You know, we hate the elites, we hate the elites, yet we lower tax to zero to empower the very elites. And somehow we got some religious philosophy that Jesus coming back, if we that's insanity. Tim Shell. You are responsible. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. Just because you don't drop the bomb, you push the button, you pull the trigger, you fire the tank, doesn't mean you're not responsible. We're all responsible. I mean, I've tried. I've fought. As hard as I can fucking fight. And I'll continue to fight. But what's going on in Gaza, what's going on in Ukraine, simultaneously are the two most vile, fucking disgusting, I mean, horrific, nightmarish fucking things I've ever seen in my fucking life. I've lived through some hardcore shit in my life. You know, including fighting the nuclear energy crime syndicate. I lived in a bone marrow transplant center for a long time. I've had my chest split open twice. My heart ripped out. I look around at people and their complicity. And yeah, isn't that great? I love we went and drone some people in Iraq. I'm going to tell me, isn't that cool? We that? I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Fuck. It's become just been normal. So what are we going to call this quarter century? What are we going to call it? Way past usury. You know, imperialism 2.0. Nah, that's not good enough. I'll come with it, up with it. It is imperialism. Old world order. It's barbaric. It's way past barbaric. It's disgusting. 
genocidal fucking maniacs. The United States is to blame for every bit of it. Every fucking bit of it. Every fucking bit of it. And again, I'll tag this to Tucker Carlson. Fuck, I grew up down there. I've been there my whole life. This son's a boy. Fuck, everybody down there knows what he is. Fuck, everybody used to laugh at that fucking clown. Boy, you know, the CIA. Boom, that's what they all are there. That's what America's turned into. I mean, it's a bloodline connected, fucking propped up, fucking freak show. What's three branches of government here? CIA, NSA, CFR, and none of them got any integrity. But I got news. If you're inside the CO, guess what? You get canceled too. You know, mama was a hippie. Daddy was a yippie. Of course, a mom who bolted on him. That inherited wealth, artist, gazillionaire. Got a cancer in 2011. That's when I got it. When did Walmart transfer on 11 11 11? All coincidence, bro. You know, I don't go for the coincidence shit. Hmm. Hmm. Tim Shell. Tim Shell. And everybody in the United States needs to take a hard fucking look at themselves. Pacific Ocean dies, stock market makes all time highs. Stay in tune.